Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. And for all you new people out there, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We do appreciate it. That's what we work for. But today we're going to do part two of why your mower won't start. But we're going to focus on the Briggs & Stratton e-motor. Now, the e-motor is very similar to the quantum motor, but it's got an entirely different carb setup, so it's a different rebuild. Still pretty easy. It's actually easier. And you'll find the e-motor on everything from a Toro clear it down to a yard machine. Troy Belts, Craftsman's, Husqvarna's probably have them too, I don't know. But it's a super common modern motor. So let's get on it. Okay, let's get started on this bad boy. Huh, that well, looks like they've got an invisible air filter on this one. Whoops. On one. So you got two screws that go into the carburetor and two screws that go into the base. There we go. I'll list the tool sizes in the description. Once you get these screws out, all you have to do is disconnect the fuel line and you're pretty much off. This one's even easier to take off than the other one. There you go, and we're free. So let's go ahead and, and kink the gas line. That way we won't have any fuel spill when we're doing this. And remember to take lots of pictures. This is a pretty good time to take a picture. Pretty good time to take a picture inside here too. See, this will pull right off very gently. Sometimes not very gently. There we go. Now you don't want to go past that because we've got a piece of linkage up here. But this allows us to reach the fuel line more easily. There you go, now that our fuel line is released. Now we may get a little bit of fuel out of here, but that's okay. Wouldn't have it any other way. We know we've got the line kinked, so not much will escape. Yeah, you got only a few drops. Now, we'll very carefully unravel this here, and we've got our carburetor loose. So, let's go ahead and take it to the bench and rebuild her. These are pretty easy to clean up inside. The jets pop right out on these. I'll take a screwdriver. Notice that I took it out and sprayed it off real good before we started. Mostly because there's just no reason not to. Oop. Okay, let's grab a great big screwdriver. There you go, it moved a little bit. But what you're doing, there's an O-ring holding this in. So you want to be reasonably gentle with it. Ow. There we go. And it's got some fuel in it, and the fuel doesn't look terrible. This is your jets on this carburetor. That's it. And to take them out, all you do is leverage them up gently. Find a good angle. There we go. And they won't come out super easy, but they will come out. And it came out and it made a run for it. And that's it. That's your jets. Now what you'll have is you'll have clogs in here. And that will cause your carburetor to just simply not work. So we're going to use, excuse me. Same green wire we used on the other one, we're going to use to clear this, this one. And when it's clear, you should be able to push it most of the way through. And 
and looking here. I know it's not easy to see. But looking here, we've got a hole now. And it looks good. And then you've got this hole here, which is your other concern. The combination of these, this one, this one, and this one, well, of all of them really, are the jets for your carburetor. It's never going to clear that one out real good. You might hear about people drilling out the jets, but you don't want to do that because if you do, you're going to end up allowing the carburetor to get more air than it really wants and more fuel than it really wants. You'll allow the carburetor to get more fuel than it really wants, and it will not run correctly. So now that one might be clear. We're going to blow on it and find out. Okay, it felt semi-clear. So now we're going to run this through the through the cleaner. But first, we're going to pop the float off and take a look at the needle and seat. And we know this one's not leaking fuel, so we're not worried about that. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now we're going to pop this, this, and this into the cleaner. These are the functional parts of the carburetor. These are the parts that need cleaned. Well, that doesn't need cleaned. These two need cleaned. Be back in 30 minutes. Okay, it's been through the uh, ultrasonic. Now you can use carb spray if you want. I use an ultrasonic only because I've got one. I used to use carb spray all the time. So let's take a look at what we've got here. These are the jets. You know, the camera doesn't like the light much. Let's see if I can block it enough to let you see inside. I guess that didn't work. For the human eye, you can see easily with the light behind it that this little hole has cleared. And I looked at it again in this little hole. Look, you can see actually see down it. How about that? But that little hole here is cleared, and this one is cleared. And that means that it's ready to go. So now let's put it all back together. Now the good part about this is you can only put this together one way. Because inside here, this little O-ring goes in the slot at the closest to the outside. And all you do is press it back in. And it always presses in a lot easier than it comes out. So let's put the needle and the float back on. You want to Hang the needle on this first and then, oh, nope, excuse me. On this carburetor, you also want to put the needle in, or the uh, pin in. Use it all back in until it lays down, and then just click these back down with a screwdriver or something. Sometimes your fingers will work. There you go, there's one, there's the other. Okay, check and make sure it's running freely, which it is. If you look inside it, again, easy to see with the human eye, not so easy to see on the camera, but the needle is moving with this correctly. So now let's put the base back on. And the base is just like the, uh, the jets. It only goes on one way, and it goes on in a manner that it clears this. So don't try to force anything. If it's not going on reasonably well, then review what you've got. You can see that's clicking in nicely. So we'll put the screws in to let it snug it the rest of the way down. We're going to put our handy dandy screw down. There we go. We're going nice and gently. I've got a variable speed trigger, which controls the amount of pressure this is putting on it. And you can hear it rattling back and forth inside, so you know you did it right. Okay, before we walk away from this carburetor, I want to talk about this a little bit. This little vent port, if your jets are clogged, this little vent port will allow enough air in to prevent this motor from priming correctly. So clog, stopping this, even if your jets, even if your primaries are a tiny bit clogged, stopping this will allow the motor to start, and it'll run fine. It just won't prime decently. So here, we probably won't need it. But if this comes out while you're working on it, make sure you seal it back in correctly. 
doesn't matter what you use to seal it, but make sure you get it in nice and tight and put a good seal right here. Because this carburetor is 100% clean inside, we should not have to block it, but let's find out. So now we've got all that done, let's put her back together. And if you took pictures when you started, this is gonna be pretty easy. First thing we'll do is reach in here and get our linkage back in place. Then we'll carefully slide our connector there, put our gas line back on. Sorry, not meaning to jump in front of the camera, but there's only so much room in here. And you gotta share with me sometimes. Okay, there you go, our gas line's back in place. We'll take that off. And before we mount the carburetor, we'll go ahead and squeeze it back on and get it in place. There you go, our clamp's in the right place. So now let's very carefully Ouija this around and get her back in. And you want to use care not to bang that little white part around here around too much because it is your nemesis. There we go. That's pretty close. And there it is. Now she's easing her way back on. And she's in. So let's go ahead and put our faceplate back on, which is the base for the air filter. It's not much to look at right now, but that's okay. We're in, still in testing phase. We'll reattach our two screws. And once we have our two screws in, where's the other one go? Okay, now let's attach our two machine screws on the outside. And that's it, she's in place. The only thing she doesn't have is an air filter on her. And well, I'll have to order one of those. But we can test it just like it is. We just wouldn't want to run it that way for any length of time. And I always say that a mower, when it's built correctly, and it's running correctly, it should, it should start on the first pull. So let's give this a try and see if it starts on the first pull. We might have to give this a minute for the gas to get down into the carburetor. We might have to put a little gas in it. But let's try it with what we've got. Now, old gas might be the death of me on this one, because we don't know how long this one's been sitting around. And there you have it. Old gas and everything, she still starts fine. Now we've seen inside an e-motor carburetor and you can see it's pretty easy. That little white plastic piece is the jets. You pop it out, you clean it up with a piece of wire, spray some fluid in it or whatever. You wanna make sure that you've got flow all the way through and those little brass ends are nice and clean. As long as that's the case, the motor will probably run fine. Replace the spark plug to get it to run perfect, but clean the carburetor if it won't run at all. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.